Those who aspire to become leaders of men in their countries or states via public offices anywhere in the world reach out to the people through political campaigns, rallies, electronic and print media, all in their attempts to convince the people they can be trusted to manage their commonwealth, engender political inclusiveness, lay better foundations to consolidate economic growth and consequently improve their lives. The situation is not different in Delta State, South South Nigeria, where Governor Ifanyo Kowa, prior to assumption of office in 2015, traveled around the 25 local government areas of Delta State campaigning and selling his vision of a new Delta. The policy document that summarized his intentions was codenamed Smart Agenda. He further promised prosperity for all Deltans as a unique selling point. It's actually a highly embracing agenda that we have for the people of Delta State. The first and the principal one of them is the creation of jobs for our people. We do realize that there is a lot of youth unengagement, youth unemployment and underemployment. A lot of our women are not empowered, they are not engaged. We thought that the best thing for, for our people is to teach them ways and to empower them to be able to create jobs for themselves. That he won the election and got sworn into office was an eloquent testimony that his message struck the right chords with the people in all fabrics of their socio-economic existence. When he started, he outlined smart agenda. The platform was so complete that as time went on, it started unfolding. People started seeing what planning could be, the road infrastructure, the health infrastructure, in terms of the contributors' health scheme, the technical training skills in technical education and polytechnics. Jaldowns now discovered a semblance of good governance. This message has been translated into tangible and verifiable results on ground in terms of job creation, entrepreneurship development and many other deliverables. Little wonder Senator Koa keeps racking up the numbers in popularity and endorsements from his people. Somebody asked me how prepared are the women. I said you should look at them. By their dressing, they are prepared. By their songs, they are prepared. By their movement, they are prepared. Yes. By all their actions, they are prepared. So there's no fear about the women voting for Okowa. Okowa, he has done extremely well by providing road, water, electricity. Okowa is not partial. It's straightforward. Everybody benefits from it directly. He should go back. We, that is the governor we want. We don't want anything to fall short. Continuity. Wealth creation policy of Governor Okowa's administration. Thousands of jobs have been created and many more have become entrepreneurs. Many of these beneficiaries have given back to society by training others to become self-reliant, thereby taking a chunk off the unemployment market. I'm one year and about four months old in this business. And so far, I've been able to train 17 youths free of charge. A key strategy the Okawa-led administration adopted to lay the foundation for growth was to foster peace among the many ethnic nationalities in the state. The reason for this strategy was hinged on facts that no meaningful development can take place in a violent and chaotic society. Socio-political inclusiveness was key to douse ethnic tensions, kidnapping and other antisocial vices. You can't talk about peace without mentioning Governor Koa. He's a man of peace. You know, when uh, he took up this uh, government, there were a lot of restlessness. But you don't hear that anymore. The youth have been engaged meaningfully. Okowa is not just a governor. Okowa carries uh, God's presence. Okowa has brought calmness to Delta State. And trust me, Curtis himself don't reduce. Even demons don't reduce. His administration has been the most peaceful ever. Smart Delta. Agriculture and indeed agribusiness is a key component of the government's smart agenda. 
This is not only for its potentials for diversifying the economy, but also for its ability to absorb a lot of people in terms of employment and wealth creation. The Youth Agricultural Entrepreneurship Program is considered one of the star projects of this administration. You'll find out that most of them have gone and specialized in the areas they have chosen on their own. They are not just making money, they are also engaging and becoming role models to other young men who before now were not interested in farming. Yageb is very, very nice. It helps youth a lot. Because um, what, what I'm seeing now is this, the youth are engaging from one or the other. So from this uh, program that our state government is organizing for us, so it's, I'm very, very happy for that. I'm ready to train other people like, to be like me. But now, I can boast of something now. Jane Uzonicha and Spencer Ifanichuku, who are beneficiaries in poultry and pigry, spoke to Smart Delta Media what this means to them. Indeed, I'm grateful because it's one thing to bet a child, it's another thing to support the child to grow. This program is helping my business to grow. Senator Dr. Ifai Arthur Okowa is a man of his word. I thank him so much for this program. At least with this huge support from him, my farm will do better, even to the best this time. Jerry Osai, one-time commissioner for agriculture in the state, says the government's approach was uncommon to empowering these people. This governor has met the expectation of my dream in agriculture more than any other person. I have never seen something like this, where the government doles out money to farmers and tell them, take it free, develop yourself, employ more people. His Excellency has done wonderfully well. More beneficiaries who are representatives of their farm holdings further opened up to what the future holds given the current development. I thank God that today is a reality that I'm a beneficiary of uh, this uh, program. May God bless the governor and for continuity, the Lord will restore him in the 2019 election. With this, when it's being put into use, my production will definitely increase. Unemployment will be reduced because I'm going to employ more people to assist me in, in my farm. I'm grateful to the state governor for doing this. I'm very, very grateful. I appreciate what they're doing. I pray so that God will help them that we do more. If not, that people will benefit, it will benefit our needs. It is also worthy to note that there are many more thousands who have been trained and empowered under the Yageb program and are doing very well in their chosen enterprises. I thank God for the governor that gave us the empowerment at Starter Park. And since my Starter Park, I have my umbrellas, I have my 400 turkey, I have gone into crop cassava farm, funky leaf, I have sold it and used the money from other things. I've been able to employ some few workers and then still manage my home, supporting my husband. The program is free, in fact it's over real. Okowa is working. In fact, even the blind can even see that Okowa is working. That the people are feeling the impact of these economic programs in their lives and changing their stories is the simple reason the people have continued to turn out en masse at campaigns and rallies across the three senatorial districts to give him unparalleled grand support. What we've witnessed so far this, this shortest period since that asset was created, and as such, we have decided to go and vote in mass for him. I have seen the numerous achievements of which Okawa has done in that asset since 2015 up to now. I and my family, we are for Okawa. These well-articulated government policies providing a level playing field have also served as a boost and encouragement to private sector participation in agribusiness. The owners of Rain Oil uh, have an agricultural branch called Nosworthy. Uh, they have come into partnership with the state. This again goes to the confidence that investors are having in the state. Smart Delta. Hey, welcome to Delta. Governor where they want to go. Hi, 
My name is Fretless, and I live in Asaba, capital city of Delta State. As an entertainer, my job entails a lot of movement from one place to the other, and also to be at the right place at the right time, meaning that I need good roads to be able to meet up with work or appointments. And with the new government reform on construction and rehabilitation of all major and feeder roads in the state as part of a smart agenda, it has become so easy for me to move around at all times. Now, I just cruise from street to street, city to city, all over the state. And even apart from the roads as I move along daily, I see magnificent projects everywhere. Check out this one in Worry and several other places. Wow. Governor Koa is indeed a man with a vision. Thanks to his transformation ingenuity in just four years of an administrative journey. Imagine another four years. The energy the okoa led administration is investing in other sectors of the economy is replicated in the education subsector. The government has turned around technical and vocational education in the state. In fact, in the strategic direction for the next four years, government has proposed to establish 19 new technical colleges, one per local government area. In every local government, you must have one equipped vocational skill center. There has never been any fantastic plan like that in Nigeria, ever. As I speak to you now, the governor has constructed a committee to even go and look at the model of technical college. So we're going to Ghana, we're going to Sierra Leone to see how those old technical colleges have been built and sustained. Government also proposes to strengthen the existing polytechnics to be real centers of excellence and deliver technical manpower. We run three polytechnics and the three polytechnics are doing very well. Just that we are encouraging entrepreneurial education. We have had all our courses re-accredited in the, in the various polytechnics. In the university we have had um, uh, courses re-accredited in this last one and those that did not have accreditation before like the law faculty, the engineering faculty uh, have all been uh, fully accredited. That is quite a lot of stride. The health sector, both primary and tertiary healthcare delivery are enjoying new leases of life. For instance, in the far-flung riverine communities of Shekelewu and Oproza. The government recently took delivery of brand new cottage hospitals it recently commissioned. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Health definitely could not have been out of the roadmap for Senator Ifan Yokoa. I mean, there's, there's no doubt about that. And uh, since in the last four years, uh, the government has made a lot of effort to one, improve the health facilities, the primary health care, the general hospitals, central hospitals in various parts of, of the state, and providing medical personnel for these kinds of um, uh, facilities. All of that goes to show that um, health is important to the people. If your people are healthy, uh, they are more likely to benefit more from whatever it is you are doing. Indigents of both communities were happy they are the spotlight, courtesy of the okoa led administration. We had never expected a similar thing like this in the lifetime at this time. That's why we need to praise God. It's the work of God. God must have inspired the people who are concerned to come to the aid of these people. Because of Fedic, We'll have to transport people from here to Coco, from Coco to Sapele or Wari for treatment. Headache, headache, small fever, small vomiting. Hey, I, I begin to feel as if this is just a dream. We appreciate what they have done. Before now, the situation was in an ugly mood, in the sense that most of our people died because of lack of uh, medical treatment. But presently, we are happy when the governor and the joint venture has bring an hospital to bring life to the people of uh, this good Ebemo kingdom. Before you take person to worry, that person is very serious and dead. We don't have good health care before. By now, we have a good thing now. We are proud of Opuruza community. And I like it. I'm very grateful about this clinic. This is without prejudice to the many renovations and re-equipping of older ones to deliver quality health care to Deltans in tandem with the government's vision. One of the new facilities making a triumphant entry into the health subsector is the Asaba Specialist Hospital.
This 250-bed hospital was at least 14 years in the making when Governor Ifanyo Koa was Commissioner for Health under the James Ibori administration. Talking to Smart Delta media team, Commissioner for Health Dr. Modi Onoye explained that the hospital is aiming for the best in healthcare delivery. It will be a different manner of hospital, but able to deliver standard service that equates with what you get anywhere in the world. We decided to have here as a place of excellence where you wonder whether you're in a hospital or in a top-notch hotel. Dr. Akbe Benedicta, who is the in-house ophthalmologist, says the hospital boasts of the latest technology in the field and that patients will have the best of care. Senator Dr. Ifani also Okoa has graciously released funds for the purchase of many equipment. We are ready to cater for people. We have a fully equipped optical laboratory. We have the optometry department ready with automated um, auto refractors. So no matter the crowd of people with, that come, we'll be ready to deal with them and get efficient service delivery to them. Exuding a lot of confidence, the quality control manager of the hospital, Laura Ade, emphasized that they wouldn't be operating the business as usual kind of health care, in that from equipment to personnel will go through audits at all times to up the ante in the medical business. One of the, the things we're going to do which is very critical from the start is that we're going to have staff training and the concerns we have had so far because before we started here we had to talk to people who've used hospital services around Asaba. What are your feelings? What makes you unhappy? One of the common thing we'll find people say is the rudeness of staff. So that is a big thing for us. None of our staff will be found rude to any of our patients. So at all times we will treat them courteously. The Contributory Health Insurance Scheme has 500,000 enrollees and counting, thus making the health sector in Delta one of the most vibrant in the country. The health insurance has taken the healthcare service from secondary to the primary healthcare centers in the rural communities where the people that really need the free healthcare services. We're also extending the service to the rural riverine communities. We're opening up hospitals in most of the riverine communities. Every resident of Delta State will be entitled to access to quality health care that is affordable and of the same quality you can find in any town or city. Having approximately 28 years of active medical practice, I will tell you that I ascertained that you know, the most viable and the most sustainable health insurance scheme available in this Federal Republic is situated in Delta State, which is primarily pioneered by the Delta State Health Contributory Commission. Apart from the various empowerment programs ranging from YAGEP, STEP, cooperative societies and others, perhaps the other poster policy that has put Governor Kowa on the high in the views of the people is in the road sector. With 357 road projects spanning over 1,056 kilometers and 352.78 kilometers of drainage channels, Deltans are enjoying the best of urban rural interconnectivity with socioeconomic gains. This state used to be over flooded, but with the kind of construction, the drainage system he has done, no governor has ever tested that kind of drainage. And as we see now, the rain that is going to come now, the effect will not be fed because he has alleviated the problem. We are asking God to protect the life of Okoa and his family, to ensure that he comes back to second term and fulfill all his promises. We call him the road master. Everywhere in all the three senatorial districts in Delta states, you will see his presence. The coastal communities, which form a strategic and integral part of the state, is exhaling a breath of fresh air of massive infrastructure development never envisioned since the creation of Delta State in 1991. Take for instance, the main Exia Road in Okrenkoko and other internal roads, Palace Road in Oproza, Baramato Kingdom, internal roads in Burutu, as well as markets. The 19.7 kilometer road in Ogula Kingdom and more 
have all defied the age-long held view that it is impossible to develop the coastal communities. Since the advent of this democracy in 1999, you are the only person whom have remembered us in infrastructure. You remembered us in the Ogola Road project. You remembered us in the Putu Road project. You remembered us in allocating one billion to the Agrimo Bridge project and so many others. Your Excellency, we have never added this good in our history. The road is very accessible to development in every community. And uh, in this particular smart agenda of Senator Okoa, almost by five communities, as you can see, as you can see from Pipeline, Oputo 1, Oputo 2, Sokbolo, Yokri, all the way down. It's a connecting road, and by meanwhile, it can give easy access for business to strive and also accessibility for other prosthetic uh, developers. We are very much happy. There is joy in my heart. I'm very proud to be an indigenous of Ogola Kingdom for this great opportunity we are having from Governor Ifa Yokoa. We, in short, I give God thanks. The new ultra modern state secretariat under construction has also won Okoa accolades across the state. The people cannot appreciate him enough. Little wonder this season of campaigns, rallies, and elections. The shout of Okoa is a goal from the people endorsing him to return is ascending to deafening crescendo and decibels. Okoa is a goal! Okoa is a goal! Okoa is going for 2019! Nothing is going to stop Okoa! The roadmaster! This 2019! Okoa! 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 No shaking! No shaking! No shaking! PDP! We are urging data to come out! He marks and vote our governor and our military spirit. Thousands of young Deltans and those in the middle age bracket are rooting for COA in the forthcoming elections as their lot has improved tremendously under his watch. Thousands have been empowered through skills in the various vocational centers and many other enterprises. Some of these youths recently exhibited their wares in an exhibition put together by government to shore up their confidence and patronage of their wares. I am very happy for this good exhibition because it has made me exposed. All I'm here is just to showcase what I am and to get my contact being spread nationwide. Through this exhibition, I really met the people I love to meet. In the future, I'm looking for a very bigger farm for acres of land I'll be using. Okawa's legacies is like a moving train, impossible to stop. Consequent upon this, he has won several local and international awards in recognition of his people-centered policies. It is therefore not surprising that each campaign rally of the PDP in the state is carnival-like in nature. Therefore, the buoyant mood of Deltons to re-elect Senator Koa for a second term is fueled by these recognitions, which many say will be consolidated during his second term in office. Apart from the rallies which are often filled to the brim, Governor Koa's achievements have also been acknowledged by other bodies. In this vein, the Nigeria Union of Local Government Employees Nolge and Ohanez Ndibu, among others, have stamped their recognitions of Okoa's good works. We are today, collectively, all the evil speaking in the other state today, to endorse his candidacy so that he will continue with the good work. Because I can tell you something, there is no business that will thrive without a conservative atmosphere. So we need that continuity. The government of the United States, in consonance with his name, which is the way, has increased by 100% the allocation so, the role of local government pensions for payment of local government pensioners in Delta State. My happiness is that he did not come and abandon the project. I saw the project and he has completed the project for the benefit of the people.
He has done quite well, especially in the area of web creation. We're not going to follow you struggle for the office. We're just following you to support you. We did behind you, give it back. For Governor Ifan Yokoa, the recognitions and unalloyed support for his little contribution to give the people dividends of democracy and a better life is all the tonic and adrenaline he needs to fold up his sleeves to deliver much more in his second tenure.